A warlord can be defined as military leader with a personal army ruling autonomously over a region. The warlord era is a term typically used in reference to a period in Chinese history from 1916 to 1928, after the death of Yuan Shikai to the proclamation of the Kuomintang government in 1928. However, warlordism can be traced back to the Qing dynasty and persist long after 1928. After the after the defeat of, of the Qing dynasty in a war with Japan in 1895, they established the Beiyang army with Yuan Shikai as their leader. The army was extremely loyal to Shikai and remained cohesive under his authoritarian region from 1912 to 1916. However, after his death, factionalism quickly began to emerge in two cliques, the Anhui and the Jili were formed. Many other factions formed from local units left over from the pre-Beiyang army. During this time, China was nothing close to being a unified nation. The North and South were divided between the Beiyang Army and the Alliance League, respectively. Within the North, the different army cliques fought for control of Beijing, and governments came and went, but all had one feature in common, which was that they were all powerless to impose authority upon local factions. Paradoxically, this era of chaos created a hotbed of revolutionary activity and organizational activity within the South. The factionalism and growing dependence on foreigners drove the Southern Revolutionary to action. And in 1919, the Kuomintang was revitalized. In 1921, the Chinese Communist Party formed. And in 1923, the two formed together to establish the United Front. The Wampoa Military Academy, led by Chiang Kai-shek, was also established. And following the death of Sun Yat-sen, the revolutionaries embarked on the Northern Expedition, in which they sought to unify the different regions and factions of China. And although Chinese reunification was proclaimed in 1928 and warlords were allegedly defeated, neither claim is in fact true as the warlords were not defeated but rather co-opted into the new nationalist government. And the White Terror and CCP Kuomintang split prevented the true creation of a Chinese nation and a Chinese national identity. And it wasn't until the communists came to power in 1950 that anything resembling...